I, I remember it. Uh, Paddy Kavanagh uh, played it into me, and I just, I just smashed it. I got in. I, I think Barry Murphy and goal. I remember him after I beat Marty's near post. He probably should have saved it, but um, yeah, I, I was buzzing. And then we were winning one 0 and then we gave away a penal, and he missed the penal. I think it was Shane Robinson or uh, Ronan Finn probably missed the penal, and uh, Shane Robinson followed up and scored. I was good. Tony, how does it compare playing in a uh, Bowes Rovers game to all the other matches you would have played? Uh, like, for example, you played against Zinedine Zidane on the same pitch when Bordeaux visited Dalyman Park in the European, I think it was a Cup Winners' Cup game in 19, early 1990s. Yeah, um, no, that was a great occasion. We actually we were lucky enough to play against them twice or, or three times. We met them uh, in the UEFA Cup and we also played them in the Intertoto Cup. Um, but um, but no, you can't separate that game. You know what I mean. Any player that's played in the Bowers Rovers games, you know, you have your week in, week out. You have to do your stuff and you prepare. As as Owen said, you prepare right for every game. But you knew at the start of the week for that game that there was an extra buzz around and everyone. It, it, it mattered an awful lot to the to the supporters as well. Uh, the funny thing, really, uh, for me, uh, was when I signed for um, for Rovers. I was training in Sports Co on the Monday night in, with Bohemians, and on the Tuesday I got a phone call to say that they'd accepted an offer from Rovers um, for me to go and talk to them. So I ended up signing for Rovers on the Tuesday night. And on the Wednesday night, I was trying in sports go for Rovers. And I had to walk by uh, my old teammates to try and on the pitch beside them. So that was quite unusual. Um, uh, so that was my, my start of my Rovers career. Yeah, we're chatting to Tony Cousins here, Owen Harry and Derek Pander on the Dublin Derby between Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians on this week's Saturday panel. Listeners, do you have any questions for the lads, fans of Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians? Do you have any good stories or favourite moments from supporting your club against your great rivals? Um, sport is at its most interesting at times when we hear war stories, lads. Um, I'm thinking of Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians. And the thing that obviously comes to my mind uh, as a neutral is that story about 2004 when a pig's head was thrown on the pitch. Um, and Pig's feet were thrown on the pitch when Tony Grant and James Keddie uh, uh, left uh, Rovers to, to go to Bowes. Um, there must be dressing room tales or things that happen on the pitch or mad stuff in a, in a, in a, in a Dublin derby like that, Owen, um, that you can you can repeat on live radio? <laughs> well, probably not, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard off the bat to think of, of certain things that happen. As I said, there is moments in the game that stand out to me, like, keep up, please go. You know, we uh, cycle up to the match, end up scoring that. That, that evening and then got on his bike and cycled back down to the pub where he was walking as a lounge boy that night so there is stories like that that you, you know you, you look and you say you see young that uh, the first sort of Dublin derby proper Dublin derby at that where Rovers and Bowles and you know scored uh, one of his first ever goals and then going off the book so it's it's a nice story I suppose for him but um, there is certain things that happen in the dressing room I suppose that you won't be able to mention and um, Otherwise, I'd be getting myself into trouble. <laughs> Hope it was a free bar, Owen. Derek, anything you can uh, you can you can tell us in uh, live on the air? <laughs> uh, it's tough when <laughs> it's tough live on air to tell you uh, some of the stories. I suppose the, the biggest one was probably when um, when Luke Bourne left 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 Bowes and went to Rovers. The year after that, we played them in a game up in Daly Mount, and I think it was Stephen Beatty was playing right wing. Oh, you were, you were actually the manager at the stage, I think. Right, well, probably. I think we beat yeah, them. Right, we beat yeah. them one 0 I we, we drew one all with them. But Dave McCarty scored. Again, yes, was was it that one? One nil. Yeah, um, set yeah, piece. Right. Um, yes, Luke Bourne. I like like it was it was close to the pig's head, I think, and and stuff getting thrown at him on the pitch. But they were throwing money at him at this stage. But the money that would like he went down injured as well. I think B he hit him in the tackle and he was down injured over at close to the Jody and the amount of two euros and one euros that were what picked up that night uh, was madness. It was madness. But that was the atmosphere, that was the games, that what drew that's what drove you in the games to try and get the right result for your team at that time. Uh we were speaking Tony last week about Liverpool and Man United on the show here and we spoke about the word hate uh in football. Um is there a hate between Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers? 
Yeah, I think I think there is between there is between the supporters, but you know, I think the genuine supporters realise that the importance of the two clubs for each other. And I think um you know, I think it's fantastic at the moment with the two clubs going so well because, you know, you go into the games, the build-up during the week, there's there's an extra profile for the whole league when Bowes and Rovers are, are, are competing at the top. Um, so I do think, um, you know, one doing well and the other not, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't help uh, the clubs at all. I think they realise that by the two of them competing and doing well, it adds a, a, an extra spice. The gates are bigger. Um, it helps. It helps both clubs. So, I do think the genuine supporter, you know, wants. Uh, they won't say they want the other club to win anything, but they they do want the competitive uh, bows and rovers yeah. because it adds to the whole league. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to take a break. Tony Cousins there, Owen Harry and Derek Pander about the Derby rivalry between our Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians. Listeners or viewers out there, any questions for our guests? 53106, the text number. You can reach us on Twitter, at Off The Ball. So much to talk about after two. Join us then. The Saturday panel on Off The Ball. Hey there. Now you can't see me. That's radio for you. But I'm a cat. Nine lives and a whole lot of catitude. But getting to grips with health insurance, more slippery than Goldie over there in her fishbowl. Then I landed on HIA.ie. All the information you need to find the cover that works for you. Makes you feel like the cat's pajamas. Not that I wear them. TMI? Health insurance. Compare plans and prices at HIA.ie from the Health Insurance Authority. To keep well over the days and weeks ahead, it's good to make a plan. Keeping in contact with friends and family could be part of it. And in these times, a good catch-up over the phone can do a power of good. Make your plan today to keep well. Find more ideas at gov.ie forward slash Healthy Ireland. There's another great offer from Aldi. Our Grow With Aldi programme in association with Board Bia, now in its fourth year. It offers new Irish producers the golden opportunity to supply Aldi's 145 stores with anything, from fresh cream to face cream. After all, it's not just food products we're interested in. It's great news for customers, because when you shop at Aldi, you're supporting local suppliers too. Find out more at aldi.ie slash grow. Applications close February 5th. Aldi, every day Irish, every day amazing. The Sky Sale is now on. And who doesn't need a pick-me-up at this time of year? So get award-winning Sky TV and our best ever Wi-Fi with ultra-fast broadband together from just €50 Euro a month for 12 months. Well, that's nice. That's a feel-good saving from us. So save big on the Sky Sale. Search Sky 50 today. New Sky customers only. Availability subject to location, minimum term and further terms apply. For more info, see sky.ie forward slash speeds. Be the leader you would follow with an IMI Executive Development Program. Our flagship Masters and Professional Diploma Programs awarded by University College Cork and High Impact Shore Programs will equip you to build the future that tomorrow demands. Find out more about our upcoming programs at our virtual information event on Thursday, February 4th. Register online at imi.ie. IMI. Inspiring leadership performance. Work call time again. Your top half says I'm all business. Your bottom half says old leggings and fluffy cat slippers. We don't always see the big picture or get the whole story, but at Iberdrola, we'll always tell it to you straight. That's why our customers rate us excellent on Trustpilot. We're upfront about our energy tariffs when it's time to renew and always help you choose an energy tariff that suits you best. Whether you're a new or existing customer, the only things we hide are our own old leggings and fluffy slippers. Find out more at iberdrola.ie. It's so important to make someone happy. At the National Lottery, we just wanted to say thanks a million to all our players. In fact, make that 254 million, which is how much you raised for National Lottery good causes last year. And you will be happy too. Make the most of every driving moment. Surround yourself with comfort, style, and the latest safety technology. Choose from the award-winning range of Peugeot SUVs. The all-new 5008 with seven seats. The all-new 3008 
plug-in hybrid petrol or diesel, the 2008 and the fully electric zero emission E2008, all with our unique eye cockpit interior and five-year warranty. Visit Peugeot.ie. Peugeot, unboring the future. Get more for free with DID. Free delivery on big screen TVs, 50 inches and over. Free delivery on all vacuums, fryers and coffee machines. Plus, free delivery on all large appliances over 299. T's and C's apply. Visit DID.ie to find out more. Thank you for shopping Guaranteed Irish with DID Electrical. At Carphone Warehouse, we've got the best deals in town. Like these exclusive offers. Get the iPhone 11 for €49 Euro when you switch to 3's €45 Euro a month plan. Or get the Samsung S20 FE. Now just €49 Euro when you switch to an air plan from €29.99 a month. Or get the Samsung Galaxy A20e with Vodafone prepay for just €114.99. Shop online at carphonewarehouse.ie. Offer subject to availability. 24-month contract applies to bill pay connections. Hate missing out? News Talk Extra is news, entertainment and all the latest podcasts. Plus expert tips and competitions straight to your inbox. Subscribe now at newstalk.com slash extra. Across Ireland. Across Ireland. This is the Imro Radio Awards National Station of the Year. This, this is News Talk. It's two o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm top of the Monaghan. The health minister says AstraZeneca's announcement that it's cutting EU deliveries of its COVID-19 vaccines by 60% is a real setback. Stephen Donnelly says the pharmaceutical company will provide exact figures on supply at a meeting early next week. AstraZeneca was expected to provide the block with 80 million doses by the end of March, but it's now reported to be 31 million. Political editor for Euronews, Darren McCaffrey, says the company has given an explanation for the delay. Now, AstraZeneca say uh, this is uh, due to uh, what they call as reduced yields at manufacturing sites within the European supply chain, i.e. they're having difficulty manufacturing it. Uh, but, you know, this has been branded as a disgrace by one EU official, as a significant shortfall uh, by another, uh, simply that it is not good enough. A 14-year-old boy has appeared in court in connection with a serious assault in Dublin city centre. It's after a woman in her late 40s was stabbed on a walkway between George's Dock and Custom House Quay on Wednesday night. She was taken to the Matter Hospital in a serious condition. A teenager was arrested shortly after the attack and charged with assault causing harm, possession of a knife and attempted robbery. The 14-year-old has been remanded in custody and is due to appear at the Children's Court on January 27th. And Gardaí are warning of a text scam that is targeting AIB customers after an increase in smishing attacks this month. The scam sees customers receiving a text message claiming to be from AIB, saying they had been locked out of their account or need to block a fraudulent transaction. They will be asked to input codes into their card reader and to provide their one-time passcode. AIB says it will never ask account holders to check on a link and is advising customers not to disclose access codes or card information after clicking a link on a text. Next. It's two minutes past two. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA, you can find our best discounts on car insurance online. Go to the AA.ie. Plenty of dry and sunny weather across the country this afternoon with some isolated wintry showers in the north. Light southwest winds with highest temperatures of between two and five degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. The Saturday panel on Off the Ball. This is Off The Ball Saturday on News Talk. John Duggan with you through until 5. You can text us 53106 or tweet us at Off The Ball. We're back with the Saturday panel talking about the Derby rivalry between the two great football clubs, Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians. We're delighted to have with us today Tony Cousins, who played for Shamrock Rovers and Bohemians, who's now the current under-17 coach in Tala. Derek Pander, who also played for both clubs, and the former double-winning captain with Bose, Owen Harry. We're streaming the conversation as well. You can watch us on the social channels for Off The Ball, for Periscope on Twitter, at Off The Ball, YouTube, Facebook, and we're streaming on the OTB Sports app. Uh, just some tweets and some text to get through. Uh, Alan Kenny, uh, 6-4 in Santry back in the day. Absolutely crazy game of football. This is in 2001. Had everything, the run and lunge that Sparky Mark Rutherford made to get to the end of the fifth goal was brilliant. Uh, Connor semi-final at Daily Mount. After winning that, we knew we'd go on to win the final. 2-1 game in Tallow with Twig scoring both led on. Sticks out two when thinking about derbies. 
Uh, Connor Murphy was only five or six to Santry, so didn't really appreciate it. The other standouts, obviously, Lee, he scoring in the 99th minute. Also love when Callum has scored the winner in 2008. Peter Clark, the last derby match at Milltown was a 3-2 thriller with Pat Byrne, just brilliant in midfield. I think it was over 30 years ago now. I remember Tony training us in a guest appearance at under 12 for Priory Celtic Catala about 34 years ago when I was a kid. That is from Dave from Bancroft. Uh, uh, Cavo asked Tony about the three cup games in 94. Tony scored the winner in the second replay. Pack Dalier. Yeah, the Rovers supporters won't be talking to me now when I talk about this one. Um, yeah, we went to two replays. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the the second replay was in Daly Mount. Um, I think we we played we played the first game in Daly Mount. I think the second one was in the RDS, and then we went back to Daly Mount again. And uh, I think again, you know, because it was Bowes Rovers, the media attention that it that it drew, like Daly Mount was packed um, for the replays, and that was the great thing about. You know, you're talking over 10,000 uh, at that time. And uh, so, like, the atmosphere was unbelievable. And, of course, I, I, I scored the goal in the game to to, to win it. And uh, uh, so the Rovers, uh, I'll be getting a bit of stick over the next few months off a couple of friends of mine. But you're a Rovers uh, man, Tony. Rovers supporters. You, you're a man who went to Milltown when you were a young lad. Yeah, I supported Rovers as a boy. Um um, I was playing for a home farm at the time and uh, myself and uh, one of the players at the time, Jason Dempsey, his dad used to bring us up to up to Milltown uh, because they lived nearby a lot and uh, had the pleasure of watching the, the four in a row team who, you know, played some brilliant football at the time and ha had some unbelievable players. Like you talk about Pat Bourne. That was just unbelievable, you know. Um, when, uh, in a day as well, that it was a lot of hard men. That's I would have played okay in the evening those days. <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of hard men in those days, but Pat was a pure footballer, could could mix it as well. And liked to referee a few games. <laughs> but um, no, uh, so, yeah, so for me as well, like what Owen said, when I went to Rovers, um, it, it did mean a lot. And you kind of, you look at yourself when you play up front. I think for I think for any big club like Rovers and Bowes, history is fantastic. It, it's what makes the club, you know, people say it doesn't matter. Some people come in and say it doesn't matter about history. But history makes the club. It, it makes the club it, it's so big. Um, and I think there's a cliche as well. There's no player bigger than the club because of that history. And uh, I think when you play, when you when you arrive at a big club like Rovers and Bowles, you always play in the shadow of the player that wore your jersey because fans talk about, compare you to who played in your position. And I think that's that sets you a standard that you have to try to reach. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's what a big club is all about as well and, and for players that go to big clubs being able to deal with the fact they're going for a big club and being able to compete there and Owen in 2012 when you beat Rovers 4-0 that was a crucial time for Bohemians to get a win like that yeah it was massive you know uh, on paper we probably didn't have a team that people would have thought could compete against Rovers I mean uh, but for with a few lads who you know the we were struck. We had Dwayne Wilson, who absolutely ran the back water over. Just we were just having an issue there with uh, your line on at the moment. Um, Apologise to, to listeners for that, but we'll get you back. Uh, just a text in here in five three one six. So it was at Bowes Rovers in Milltown in September nineteen seventy eight. In first year in De La Salle Churchtown, and most of the lads supported Rovers, the local club. I supported Ro Bowes and suffered for it. Anyway, during the game, some of the Rovers fans came up to me and confiscated my black and red flag, but the great Tommy Kelly got a late winner for Bowes as I was leaving the ground a few second years from school, saw me and chatted from a distance. Coogan, you're dead. I was running all the way back to Churchtown looking over my shoulder. That is from Dermot Coogan in Dublin 18. 40 years ago, 42 years ago, uh, Dermot Coogan. So fair play for you for texting in there. Um, 
Uh, what does the panel think about derbies behind closed doors as we had uh, last year or this year? Are they the same? That is from Keen. Must be strange, Derek, for uh, Bows and Rovers matches to, to not have any fans because the fans are the lifeblood of these games. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. Um, it's not the same. It'll never be the same. You can say it's, it still drives it, but it's the fans really and the energy that they bring and the hatred that in the, the hatred in that atmosphere of playing in it between the both fan, uh, both sets of fans is, is is what makes the games. I think you know the lead up, like Tony says, the week of a derby, you get told everything. Like I walk in a bank and I I wouldn't hear it off anybody. I didn't even know there was Bowes or Rovers fans in the bank. But then once once it was a derby week, I'd be getting messages and emails from all sorts of randoms getting abused, then getting I better win the usual or we better you know you'd be going into the game thinking about work really on Monday about what people were going to say to you as well but I was at the game last year the first game of the season obviously and it was packed sold out nobody could get tickets for it it was great the atmosphere was brilliant obviously the result wasn't that great but then the game then they played in Tallow with no fans it just wasn't the same it was echoey it just it just didn't feel right it doesn't feel real Is it on the right side of the edge Derek? I think so yeah I think so it definitely is like obviously there does be patches and trouble here and there with certain Certain, certain sides, but um, I think most of the time it's it's on the right side of the edge, the games, and then the players themselves. So I don't think there'll just be many sending offs in the games. Like Tony asked me there just off air, was I sent off in the derby? I don't think I have been, and I don't think there'll just be many sending offs games because the players are, and in fairness, the referees understand the, the the game themselves, and they know there's going to be challenges. Now it's it's wholehearted, and that's the way they should be played. So that must be bizarre the first time that you experienced that going back into work on the Monday, going. Uh... Who who here is a is a Rovers fan, or even if you uh, if we were at Rovers at the time, who here is a Bose fan? And like, <laughs> it sounds a bit like yeah. Glasgow. It sounds like a bit like Celtic and Rangers. You walk in honestly, and you go into the canteen, and I just know I'm getting the daggers off everybody. Or, <laughs> you know, and there's people looking at me, and I'm looking back and going, "What's going on here?" And then you go back, and we have obviously an instant message in walk and emails, and everybody can just type your name in and get it. And then you just you're just getting abused most of the time, you know, but. In fairness, the last couple of years, it hasn't been too bad. The results have been okay. So um, it's great. It's good banter, and that's what the games are about, really. Oh, when uh, Rovers pipped you for the title in 2010, uh, did you get much stick at the time? Yeah, of course. Um, a lot of stick, obviously. But when you're in Cavalry, you don't get it off those fans. It's more the, you see a few Rovers fans around town or anywhere, a few Rovers fans that be texting you. But, um, I'd want to check that status out. Derek Pender not getting sent off in a Bowls and Rovers game. It'd be very unlike him not to be sent off. Um, I, 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 I don't, I've only been sent off five times in my whole career. I'd say you. And they were in, and they they were in who... China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, going back to the, the Rovers and, and Bowls game where we won 4 0, I'd say that we probably didn't have the, the team on paper that people thought would get a result against Rovers. Um, Dwayne Wilson up front ran the whole back for the Rovers ragged that day. Peter McMahon getting two and, and Carl Mill getting two. And it, it, you know, it was a great evening, a great occasion. And what a result for, for Bowles then, you know, because it helped us. Know, as Tony said earlier, when you get a result like that, it helps you push on in the league and, and manage to get other results. And at the time, we were struggling. And I said, we, uh, we got the three points that game and then took us on a little bit further. Oh, we, we, know, we beat them. Do you remember the, Remember later on that season, we beat them as well up in Tala 1 0 on Kevin Devaney. Kevin Devaney scored, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, that was the first time that we, we won in Tala. Yeah, and th that was a, I played centre midfield with Davy Moore, remember? And uh, Wardy played in the 10. And that for Garda, we were, like, we were struggling, obviously, at that stage. And that was obviously a big change around in the club in the, that, that 2012. But them results, obviously, were brilliant that year for us. But. Um, I'll never forget that Open Tallow was the abuse after the game. I remember the Rovers fans going absolutely mental down at the dugout. They were going after the, the Rovers players. And I think it was Stephen Kenny that actually was in charge that yeah, year, wasn't he? Yeah, Stephen was in charge. Yeah. 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 But, but like Derry said, that, you know, we have, you've gone the Bowles and Rovers games. Rovers probably have a stronger team and Bowles could get a result. Bowles could have a stronger team and Rovers can get a result. And the sort of form goes out the window. It's whoever on the day. You know, steps up to the challenge, and obviously you need a bit of luck in, the, in those games as well. But as I said the first tackle always sets a tone in those games, and you know, as I said, Dave McCarthy's one where he smashed one of the, the Rovers players, and I remember 
uh, one where Luke Bourne playing for Rovers done the exact same thing and Rovers went on and won it so the intensity in them is massive absolutely massive and Tony, um, uh, you're now based at Rovers. They're league champions under under Stephen Bradley. Exciting times. And just uh, the, the news kind of broke during the week about Kevin Zeffi going potentially to Inter Milan. How good is he, Tony? He's he's a really good player, Kevin. Um, real natural ability. You know what we were talking about earlier. You know street players. Kevin's would remind you of a street player. You know. Uh, goes by one v one can go by people, and I think any player you know that can go by people it, it, it excites you, and um, he, he also he's a good kid as well you know he 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 works on his game and you know he's played for he's played for the the seventeens uh, the 19s and the B team this year and you know there's there's no complaints no matter what team he's playing in and he's 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 adapted himself really well and you know to be so young to to play in the B league in the first division as well um shows his ability um but obviously you know he's a, he's a still very young and you don't want to put too much pressure on him either it's he's a he's a long way to go um but uh, you know it'll be a tremendous opportunity for him to go to Italy and I think, you know, it would be exciting to see him going to Italy as well. You know, that would be different for our players. I think it could happen over the next next uh, while that um, some of our players will start going to places in Europe, maybe instead of England with the, with Brexit now, that they can't go away till they're 18. So I, I, I do think there there will be an interest uh, in clubs in Europe um in our younger players now, a bigger interest than there was before. And Tony, your experiences at Chelsea and Liverpool when you were a youth at Chelsea and then you went back after you played for Dundalk, you went to, to play with Liverpool and um, obviously it wasn't a first team experience but you were you were there, thereabouts and you had a lot of injuries. Do these experiences help you when you're coaching young lads about just keeping them grounded about the whole idea of making it in the game? Yeah, you, you try your best, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's like anything... I, I, I try you try to help anybody that wants help you know if, you, if anybody wants to listen you, you give them what you, you you tell them what you feel and and you, you try you try help them as much as you can um on the sort that over the years that there's some players that might want to listen to you and uh, at the end of the day that's that's up to them. Um, but definitely your experiences over the years and you're always learning like even myself you know at, the, at this stage I went into Rovers two seasons ago back into the academy after being managing senior players you know I, I've managed over 200 league games at senior level and, and to drop down you know uh, it was a culture shock for me at uh, first um, it's totally different you're dealing with parents rather than just dealing with the players themselves. And, uh, you know, when you're senior manager, you're over everything at the club. And, you know, something, uh, someone uh, that you feel you don't want at the club, as a senior manager, you can make that decision where it's a bigger it's a bigger decision from everybody at an academy. Um, so, you know, it has been, it has been different and something that, uh, for me to get used to, but... You know, it is it is tremendous that we have these academies now and you know that uh we we can we can bring our own players through, you know what I mean, and and, and uh, uh, for them to to strive to play in our force team and you know, as I said earlier on with Brexit now as well, you're kinda of hopeful that some of the better players won't be gone away and we'll start reaching the force teams b- between seventeen and eighteen that they could make an impact here or there in, in the first teams earlier. Yeah. Um, if you look at some of the younger players that have gone away, some of them have played in England in the first teams, like Robbie Keane and all at 18, 17, 18. There's no reason why if, if, if those top players don't go away that they can't play in our first teams uh, at that age. Uh, 53106, uh, listening to this talk makes me long for the night we can return to live football under the Friday night lights. That is from Mick, a Rover supporters uh, in Roscommon. Yeah, thanks for your text, Mick. Anybody else wants to get in on the chat here? Uh, Owen Heary, like, uh, you've also coached, and you have as well, Derek Pender, uh, at underage level. 
the link, Derek, between the FEI and these League of Ireland uh, sides now as academies, de facto academies, is it working? Are we getting a good crop of young players coming through Irish football, in your view? Yeah, well, look, I've only been in a year. And yeah. like, like what Tony says, it's a, it is a bit of a culture shock when you're stepping down from senior level into the academies. And there's a lot of people who do a lot of, lot of great work that goes that people don't see behind the scenes in the academies. They put a lot of time in, a lot of a lot of effort and off their own back really, you know, it's 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 unbelievable. Is the FEI and the at the link I I think it can obviously it can always get better, can't it? Everything yeah. that we do we can we can try and get better and I think that's what we need to try like try and do and strive to do as we go along, especially in this lockdown now. Was last year the kids were hit and it was it's that's what yeah, we forget about the kids as well with football. Everything they centered themselves around us to play football and it was taken away from them last year. They didn't get to play many games. It's a year their development gone. So this year I think it's incredibly important that uh, we try and get the with fans not being at the game yeah. for the whole season. It's got it's costing clubs. Um, you know, if you look at the amount of academy teams as well that aren't playing, as Daddy said, you know, for mental health, it's it's massive that they need to be back playing. They need to be out there with their friends, they need to be getting coached by their coaches. As Derek said, it's a, it's a year now without without proper coaching, but it's also a year without them mixing with other kids. It's also, you know, they're out of school. So it's difficult to say what sort of um, situation that the, the clubs are find themselves in and how do, you, how do you bounce back from it? When do crowds come back? When are we able to get uh, schoolboy football? When are we able to get football in general back to its sort of normality? And I think it's, it's quite a difficult one to, to answer. But now is the time, I think, where people should put their heads together and come up with a plan on how to develop the league and how to bring it forward. You know, why nothing is happening now at the moment is to sit down or be on Skype calls and, and try to organise to make the league much better going forward. Yeah, and the Brexit thing, as Tony says there, is very important because the young lads won't be able to go until like they're 18 unless they change the rule. Uh, the pandemic, uh, as you said, they're allowing us the chance, Owen, to reset, to completely reimagine how we do things post the COVID situation. Um, we've seen that in the GA with the club and the county now being split. Uh, we're talking today on Skype. Um, it's not ideal. You're not in the studio. <laughs> it is a bit remote. Um, you can have technical issues. Uh, what would you like to see? Obviously, I think one thing, big thing, Owen, is infrastructure, that we want better infrastructure around the country when it comes to the League of Ireland grounds and having an experience for the supporters and getting these players known in their communities. Yeah, well, I think that's gone back over since I played. You know, I started back in 1993 and we've been talking about the infrastructure. We've been talking about improving the ground, the playing surfaces, training surfaces, you know, and it still has in 20, 30 years, it hasn't developed that much. Yes, there has been clubs that are putting uh, money in, like Shamrock Rovers building the clubhouse, building a great stadium, also having um, good training grounds. But there's still a lot of clubs that need to catch up, and you know they need help from the FEO. And as I said, now is the time that I think that they should be sitting down because we don't want to wait till eight months down the line. Football is back, crowds are back in, and then we're sitting there thinking, oh, maybe we should have improved this and should improved that for the fans. Now is the time as well to get information from the fans and how they see. How the, uh, how the league could be improved and get all the information that we can now and, and hopefully have the, the right people put in place to, to push it forward for us. Uh, Tony, Jack Byrne of, of Shamrock Growers before he went to Cyprus was the first player to play a competitive uh, match from the League of Ireland for the national team in 35 years since the glory days of Rovers when you're speaking about the triple-double. Um, can you see a time when League of Ireland players will regularly play for the national team? Is that Or is that a pipe dream? I think at the moment it's it's difficult. Um, in fairness, last year it was great that a few of the players were involved in the international squad. And obviously with Jack playing, you know, even for the games, you're going up on a Friday night and you, you've got a present international out on the pitch. It, it, it does raise the profile of the league. But, you know, what Owen said there about, about the same things, talking about the same things, like... You're going back, I'm going back on my whole career and the same things are being spoken about now. You know, we're still in a league with no TV rights. Um, we're, I, I think we're one of the only leagues in Europe that the clubs are getting no money coming in through TV rights. And at the end of the day, the, you, you need to get, you need to be, to get money coming in uh, through streamlines like TV rights to be able to compete and go professional um, until like, we have a complete professional league. 
I can't see us getting regular players uh, in the international teams. We, we will get the odd player like Jack playing, but until the whole league is professional, like at the moment we've got a Premier League with some teams professional and some teams semi-professional, uh, that's not knocking the teams that are semi-professional. They're making a massive uh, commitment in their training, the players. Um, you know, I think uh, we t- we hear about the GAA players and they're fantastic and the commitment they make. But, you know, a semi-professional player in the League of Ireland at the moment, the commitment that he's making to try to be as fit as, as a full-time player it is massive. And, uh, but, you know, we need help. Uh, it's no point in saying, you know, you're looking at grounds and that around the country. Uh, we know the situation the FEI are in, but we need help from the government and we need help that it goes directly into funds for ground improvements or training, training ground improvements around the lake. Um, and that it's, it, it goes straight into that fund. Um, I think if you look, Loud GEA announced a 12 million new stadium um the other day and they're talking about having to raise a tour of that themselves and they'll get a tour from the GEA and then a tour of it from the government. That's four million they'll get from the government. We've got Dundalk Football Club who, you know, have been uh the top club um a successful club in the last few years and uh, they're still playing in the in 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 Oriel Park, and it hasn't really changed since I played there. And I think you know, four million to help develop that ground will come in ha- handy. Uh, so I do feel that you know we need the government on board as well to develop the grounds and the training grounds, and uh, and, and and for us to get behind us. Yeah, a l- lovely text in here. Thanks for that, Tony, on 53106. Mid-70s, 16-year-old me went for a job interview. So what are your interests, I, I was asked. The boss asked me. I support the bows, I said. The bows? Yeah, bows up in Denny Mount. Are they good, he asked. Any good? They're brilliant. And I proceeded to tell the poor unfortunate about every member of the bow squad. I finished the interview by telling them he should go up and watch bow sometime. I will, he promised. A week later, I was told I got the job and I discovered that the man interviewing me was on the board of management at Denny Mount. That was from Aiden. Uh, that was Aiden Jones. Was the man of the board of management. That uh, is from Kieran in Dublin. He says, "God bless him." Lovely text on five three one zero six from Kieran. Listening to our Bows and Rovers chat, we're coming to the end of it. Uh, Owen Heary, I'm just interested. You won seven league titles in the League of Ireland. Are you more interested and engaged about the fact that you have a League of Ireland man, Stephen Kenny, as the national team manager and how he's getting getting on and how he's going to going to do and, and and invested in uh, supporting how he does. Yeah, I think, look, Stephen has done very well in the league here, you know, and probably deserves a, a chance of managing the international team. Um, I'd like to see Nick finish out, you know, the playoff game and then let Stephen take over and give him a free reign of it. Um, I think he was put under pressure to win the, the playoff game straight away. And, you know, obviously we, we got beaten in that. And then results haven't been great for him since then. But I think he needs time. I think he needs to get his own stamp on it, get his, the right players in, have the strongest squad he can possibly have and the strongest team out on the, out on the pitch. But, um, there's no, I know that a lot of people are judging him already on, on results, but I think he, he needs a lot more time. And uh, he just, as I said, the next the next couple of games, if we can get a, a foothold of him and get a few uh, few wins, score a couple of goals, you know, people will then will, will judge him on how we, how we go forward into tournaments. And Derek, would you be of a similar view that Stephen needs a... A bit of a break, a bit more time to, to, to kind of get a stamp on the Republic of Ireland team and a full campaign. I think so, yeah. I think definitely give him a full co- campaign. It's like what Owen says. He's put on a straightaway pressure to go and try and win the playoff games. Comes in, and especially with the situation last year, players pulling out all the time. The the situation the war was in, everything. I don't think he, he had a proper a proper crack at it with proper sessions or the proper camp where he, everybody was together and he had all his best players together. So... Hopefully, going forward this year and and in the qualification for the World Cup, obviously gets gets everybody fit and all the players available to him, and he gets a good shot at it. What's the hopes for the new season, uh, Derek? With Bohemians, do you think uh, you can challenge for the title? Oh, so I think 
I think he just just uh, will be trying to obviously be trying to build on every year that they've been playing. And last year they finished second. It was a great year for them, especially with everything that was going on. So hopefully we get a full season this year for everybody, really for the fans as well. That and all, all clubs that the season goes ahead and there's no breaks and we get as many games as possible in and it's a good competitive year. Um, and Bowles obviously hopefully stay up that end of the table and qualify for Europe again next year. I'm sure. And Tony, uh, the hope is to go back to back and maybe make an impact in Europe with Chamber Rovers. Yeah, definitely. I think Stephen's done a great job. And it, it kind of gets back to as well what the, you're talking there about Stephen Kenny. You know, if you look at Brad's, or, um, you know, he was under a little bit of pressure at times in, in the start of his career. But because the board stuck with him and gave him the time, it's give, he, he, he was able to put his stamp on the team and I think, you know, everybody looks when you're successful and say, oh, you've done a great job. But I think he had a way he wanted to play. And uh, he he stuck to his guns on that. And he didn't go away from it. Even when the results early on in his, his management career up there wasn't gone from, he stuck with his principles and his belief of the way he wanted the team to play. And, you know, really it's been a pleasure the last few years to go up and see the team the way they play, uh, play um, the game, and the, the entertainment that they're giving the supporters, and and when you're winning on the back of that as well, it, it is fantastic. But um, I think the way it is, we've signed well again this year. The squad is very strong, and um, they, they've built up a great, there's a great group of players there. Not just the, uh, the ability of them, but the way they carry themselves. Um, I think is a big thing as well, and I think the management, uh, um, Steve McPhail and Glenn Crownan as well behind the scenes, uh, uh, involved. You know, they keep the players grounded, and you know the players um, really conduct themselves okay. uh, really well around the play, around the, in, in things that they do off the pitch as well. And I think they're they're hungry as well. If you talk to any of them, they're hungry for more success and. You know, even the little experienced players we brought in, like Joey O'Brien has been a re revelation for us. Just, you know, in the dressing room, you know, the experience that he has. And, you know, and he's such a nice fella, Joey. And he's been up in the academy as well. He's been a big help for everybody. There's no problem talking to him, picking his brain. And, uh, you know, he's been brilliant uh uh, for the for the whole club in relation to the first team and yeah. uh, and getting involved in the academy as well and you know I really feel we can push on again this year and I'm actually looking forward to seeing how they can do in Europe okay. because of the style that they play with. Tony Cousins, I'm very sorry we got to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for your time, for your time as well, Owen Harry, and for your time, Derek Pander. It's been such a great, good-natured discussion between Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers. We'd expect nothing less from uh, three legends here on the Saturday panel. Take care, lads, and hope uh, we'll uh, get some football back soon. Cheers. Okay. Thanks. This is Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk. We're back after this. The Saturday panel on Off the Ball. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Hang on, I, I think I think Mark's Wi-Fi is down. Mark? I, I think he's frozen. Uh, we know he's frozen, Miles. He's not moving. No, I, I think he's actually frozen solid. Working from home this winter? Make sure those heating bills don't bite. Switch to Energy is cheapest dual fuel bundle and save even more with our winter price freeze. See energia.ie. Energia, the power behind your savings. EAB 1,413 euro based on average annual usage. 12-month contract, discount unit rate, standing charge, PSO levy and carbon tax, T's and C's and early termination fee apply. Valid from October 2020 to the 31st of January 2021 and subject to change. Verification in T's and C's at energia.ie forward slash EAB. You know the Skoda Kodiak? Now meet the Kamek. It can fit a starting team of NBA players, a four ball and a caddy, a quartet and their conductor or the front five in a scrum. How much space do you need? The Kamek has all the benefits of the Kodiak, the tech, the style, and the SUV feel. Because at Skoda, we put big thinking into each of our cars. So you see, the Kamek is not small. It's just smaller. The new Skoda Kamek. Visit skoda.ie. Dundeal has the largest range of premium cars in Ireland with Ireland's trusted car dealerships. That's why you'll find Leinster's Spirit Motor Group on Dundeal. 
Stop by Spirit's online showroom on Dundeal today and connect with Spirit who will deal and deliver safely to you. Dundeal, for deals to feel great about from all of Ireland's trusted car dealerships. In the real world, we know it's the customers you keep that keep you in business. Over 70% of Liberty Car Insurance customers stay with Liberty Insurance when renewal time comes around. That doesn't happen by accident. Switch at libertyinsurance.ie and see why so many people stay.